What you have just witnessed is the, in Chinese they call it the long, soft form of the Tai Chi Chuan. What we will do now is break it down. Since we're in an enclosed studio where we're captive by lights and space, we'll be constantly coming back. Ideally, this would be done in one long line. The classical Tai Chi stance begins all Tai Chi. So we bend our knees. Our feet are roughly two and a half, three, four fists between our ankles. We sink into Mother Earth. The classical Tai Chi stance is like so. From this position in the beginning of the long soft form, we drive all our energy into Mother Earth through our right foot. We soar on our left, and we reach out northeasterly. So this would be east, so that is west, south, north. So we start out, and we soar up, and we reach out to see if Mother Earth is still there. And then we drive all our energy into our left foot and whip up our right Tai Chi stance. And then we go into the torque very slowly. And we run our arms, our hands parallel with our meridians, and we embrace the universe. And we collapse into the sea. Our hands go under our ears. We bend our knees. We do not raise our torso. We whip around, and this is known as patting the mane of the horse, the horse's neck. As we come up, the right hand comes over the top of the head of the horse and down its neck. And as both hands go towards the right thigh, we drive all our energy into our right foot. We soar up in what is known as blowing out the chi, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit. Our legs go across, and we blow out our chi, and then we bring it back in very slowly. As we bring it in very slowly, the right hand is synchronized, moving to the west with the left foot. Both hands are on top, one on the bottom, so that they are synchronized. Right hand is with left foot, left foot with right. And to move out of this position, all we have to do is turn our back right foot here to the north, and thereby releasing our energy to the west. Once more now, driving all the energy into our left foot, the right foot goes out and across and down. And we blow out our chi once more. Out, in, bringing back. Slowly now you will notice that the left hand is moving with the left right foot and so we're in this completely opposite of what we were a minute ago. Turning the back left foot here to the north, we're able now once more to turn to the east. And very slowly, we bring our right left foot out, across, down. And once more, we blow out our chi. The whole form, this is probably the most difficult for the beginners. But once you learn it, it is very easy to blow out and to bring in. The breathing takes over so that you suck in the air, cross down and out. Bring in, recovery, turning. What you will notice that the Chinese have discovered, they're using one half of their body against the other half. The spine becoming the focal point in which we breathe out, we suck in, and we turn. Uh, now I will trace my steps. So once more, the secret is cross, go out, cross, bend, extend. As it comes in, we recover our equilibrium, we turn, once more, out, cross, bend, 
extend. Any one of these forms, katas, may be done <laughs> ad infinitum, but very slowly as we move along, blowing out our chi, we now move to the next shift, which is known as ward off blow. So very slowly, the left hand comes up, the right dips. We plant our right foot here to the east, and we soar, drive all the energy into your left foot. We soar up, and we chop the monkey. Here the monkey represents everything that screws us up, everything that makes us less than we should be. So we chop the monkey, we turn our right foot here to the north, and we come up. The secret here is to bring your right kneecap over your left, and you play the harp. Basically what you're doing is you're protecting your head, your heart, your vitals, and the family jewels. Okay, so once more, we blow out our chi, ward off blow, stop the monkey penetrating us, chopping, and into playing the harp. From this stance, playing the harp, so we're protecting our vitals. We lower, notice the Tai Chi stance, we lower, and then we move into what is known as brushing, sparrows off kneecap. The secret here is to drop the weight into your rear. The hands come across the kneecaps. So basically we're going from southwest to the north to the southeast. Keep your torso straight. From this position, brushing sparrows off kneecap, we spot the monkey from the southwest, we come around parallel. When the right hand is over the right foot, that is the signal to turn your right foot here to the east and to plant it. Then both hands and left foot go to the south, which in Renism is known as three sheets to the wind. And from this position, spinning around, bending, we start the attack on the monkey. The hand comes over the ears and down. It's like a roller coaster. For beginners, the tendency is to shove. If you notice uh, how many muscles am I using in the shoving process and how many muscles am I using in the roller coaster? Or if we reverse it. Okay, so we came around spotting the monkey and we move into the stance that is known as repelling the monkey. Both hands are supine to the south, left foot is to the south, we bend, and we begin the attack on the monkey. Notice the feet work is same as we did in blowing out a chi. So the hand comes down, and for one split second, both hands are supine to the heaven, asking for help. Then as this hand, the back left hand, comes over the ear and down. This hand is coming in. So for beginners, what is very important is to practice push, pull, yin, yang, summer, winter, male, female, fall, spring. So basically, if we're in this position, as the hand comes over, notice that they're touching for beginners 12, 18 inches in front. And then as you shove the monkey to add insult to injury and security, you follow your back moving right hand. And once more, advancing on the monkey, following the back moving left hand, which means we're really using our neck muscles. And once more, this is known as repelling the monkey. Okay, so whatever that screws us up, fakes us, alienates us, discombobulates us, makes us less manly, less feminine, we are fighting. We keep this up 
And finally, we realize this monkey is getting mighty powerful. The monkey is becoming King Kong. And so, as we advance on the monkey, notice the footwork is the same as blowing out our chi. It's really only the hands that changed. Stiff arm on the monkey, following the back moving hands, using our neck muscles. We now are pushing the monkey back. But the monkey is getting stronger and stronger. So what we do now is we stiff arm the monkey. So here we plant our right foot to the east. We stiff arm the monkey and literally step across like an American patrol boy and we stop. So far, no further. The right hand comes over the ear as usual. As it comes over the ear, the right foot turns here to the north and we go down in supplication. So make sure your feet are in alignment. The left hand is supine to the heaven. Right hand is suppressive. So you go down in a swoop. And as you come up, the right hand turns. And we're literally asking the monkey to go away, not to bug us. We bring our right hand, uh, kneecap over our left, and this is why it's called supplication. The monkey will not leave. The monkey is growing. So finally, we have to realize, keeping our eyes on a monkey, very slowly, we retreat. So from this position, we drop back. It is pure Shaolin, the great school of martial arts of the Chinese. As the right hand comes by the chin once more, if you notice the footwork now, it is just the opposite of what we were doing. So as we retreat from the monkey, the left foot is put behind the right foot, and then we soar up on both toes, and we literally turn. Just to show you, when we were advancing on the monkey, we would go like this. Notice the footwork. The American Medical Association, AMC, were fascinated with this. Okay? What we're going to do now is we put the left foot behind and we turn. Right foot behind, turn. Notice that it's always on a, what I call, a right angle. What is amazing is that what the Chinese have discovered over the centuries is how to use one half of the body against the other half. In the beginning, it's a little peculiar, but you get used to it. So once more, we went down in supplication, we come up, and we retreat from the monkey. So basically what we're doing, we're just doing the reverse. Advancing on the monkey, now we're retreating from the monkey. And of course, as I mentioned before, any one of these forms, brushing sparrows off kneecap, advancing on the monkey, retreating from the monkey can be done as long as you want, as long as your body will hold out. Now, as we're moving along, retreating from the monkey, we begin to get an enlightenment, a satori, that this is a lot of monkey business. And so finally, once more, ward off blow. We bring our right foot behind, plant it to the east, drive all our energy into our right foot, once more, what is known as the ward off blow. So left hand comes over, okay? And then we, once more, chop the monkey. The only time in this form, we bring our left kneecap over our left toe, we bring our right foot up a bit, and staying low is the only time in this whole form we blow away the monkey from this position. And from this position, we get down. So try and get down your torso, not out like this, but down. So we blew away our chi, the monkey also, and we pack the monkey. So we get back here as far as possible, and we bring our hands right across our right kneecap. So the signal is, as we bring our hands across our right kneecap, then turn the right kneecap here to the north, so that we're in a line. One of the great characteristics of the southern 
Shaolin school of the soft school is this perpendicularity. Okay? So we pack the monkey. Okay? Notice the feet, everything is aligned out to the north. And from that, we sh pack the monkey. Then we wash the monkey, usually in counts of threes, coming down. When we get down here, we drive all the energy on our back right foot. We soar up, and we push the monkey. OK, so once more. We pack the monkey, we wash the monkey, and we soar up and we shove the monkey away. Okay, the secret here is to keep your back right foot anchored. You don't want to bring it up. If you bring it up, you're overextended. Keep it down, work the Achilles. From this position, the left hand holds the bow, the bow and arrow. So the left hand holds the bow, the right hand now has the arrow, and of course, this would be the string. So we shoved away the monkey. Left hand takes the bow. Right hand takes the arrow and the string, and is pulled. So you pull it like so to break it down. We just shoved away the monkey. Left hand holds the bow. Right hand takes the arrow and the string and pulls. As it pulls, we're now moving towards the east again. The weight is shifting. Right now, it's 50-50, left foot, right foot. But now, as we begin to turn, notice my back right foot is turning to the east. My left foot is rising and facing the east. As I shift this from 50-50, 75-30, now 100% of weight is in my left foot. And I know I've done it properly if I can do this. Okay, absolutely no weight should be on the right. Okay, and at this moment, for the first time and only time, the right foot shoots up, the right hand comes along, and for one split second, the right hand and that right foot are in tandem. All the weight is on the left foot, and immediately you bend and you blow your chi or blow the monkey here to the south and then we pack the monkey and so forth. But to break it down again, what we've done to the north, we'll now do to the east. To put that all together, for beginners, basically, we chop the monkey, and we snuck up on the monkey, and then we blew away the monkey, and we packed the monkey, and we washed the monkey, and we shoved the monkey, and we pull the bow. And now we will do to the south just what we have done to the north. We blow away the monkey. We pack the monkey. We wash the monkey. We shove the monkey. And we pull the bow. Notice that when we pull the bow, this time to the south, the hands came around. We exploded to the south. We blew the monkey to the south. Notice the feet are at right angled. And then we packed the monkey. Notice this time, the other time is reversed. This time, as the hands come across the left kneecap, that is the signal to pivot to the south. Wash. Soar up now on your back left foot and shove the monkey to the south. Now the right hand holds the bow. The left hand holds the arrow and the string. And once more, we pull. And as we pull, we're moving to the south. The left foot is moving to the south. All my weight now is on my left foot. Notice the slant of my right foot. I drive all the energy into my left foot, whip up, Tai Chi stance. This is the only time, uh, this is the ordinary classical Tai Chi stance, but in this, we're like so. Okay, so we move down range. So we're in this position. It's very much like American football on the line when you're blocking. Notice the hands are at right angle. This is the distinguishing characteristic of the Shaolin school. 
knees are bent. From this position now, we're going to go into clouds and rain, a very beautiful, lyrical, pure martial. Clouds, the hand, the right hand goes straight out. The body is stationary. On rain, as the left hand goes out, the left foot takes this one step here to the north, and the left hand goes out. The right hand comes straight up. It's very important to get this in sync. As it comes up, the right foot comes over. What we have to be careful in learning is not to slam in, okay? Basically what you want to do is, by this time you should be used to your body, the weight. So you take a step here, and you take the identical same step here. It comes with practice. So we pull the bow, Tai Chi stance, clouds. Notice how on rain the whole body moves to the north one step. The interrogation, notice my right hand is protecting my vitals as it comes up. In rain, in clouds, the body is stationary. We only move on rain. We know that, we run out of the rain. So this is rain, this is clouds. So clouds, rain. Clouds, rain. Clouds, rain. Clouds, rain. As we know in the south, especially in Louisiana Gulf states, whenever there's clouds and rains, there's maybe danger of hurricane, typhoon. So once more, clouds, rain. Notice how I don't move until it's perfectly parallel with the floor. Clouds, rain. Clouds, rain. Now for hurricane, it is the same thing. We have clouds, but on hurricane, we take a longer step to the north. We've been going this far. For hurricane, we stretch. And as we stretch now, as we move, into hurricane, the left hand crosses underneath protection, okay? So the left hand, instead of coming like this, okay, or like this, the hand now comes across, and this hand sweeps. So this hand shoots across, this hand sweeps across and makes a great arc, the rainbow, the lightning bolt. So the hand is circular, Drive all energy into your right foot, soar up on your left, lightning rod. Okay? So get it in sequence. Clouds, rain. Clouds, rain. Here comes the hurricane. Clouds, hurricane. Okay? Drive all the energy into your right foot, soar up on your left, straight up. Lightning bolt, oops, chop the monkey. Now in chopping the monkey this time, for the first time, as the right hand comes up, comes down I should say, the left, the right leg turns to the north. As it turns to the north, as if there's a string tied between the hand and the right thigh. So you come down and you turn and you drop. It is known as searching for the jade at the bottom of the Pacific. So once more, hurricane, lightning bolt, chopping monkey, and this hand, the right hand and the right foot in tandem, searching for the jade stone at the bottom of the Pacific. Notice it's as if the right hand controls the thigh. They go up together, right hand then turns and lowers. From this position now, we go into the flamboyant. So once more, Tai Chi stance, torque, embrace the universe. Notice the hands are circular, nimbus. 
As you go down now, you will bend. Whatever hand goes under, the exploding monkey will go in that position. So we torqued, we embrace the universe, we sweep up the earth. And as we go down, here my right hand is under my left, so I explode in the right. You may do it either way, but whatever you do, you do the reverse. So once more Tai Chi stance, torque, embrace the universe, sweep up the earth. Now I'll put my left hand under my right, therefore I must explode to my left. This is known as exploding monkey, seen through everything that jerks us, that alienates us, fragments us. Once we, done, once we have done exploding monkey left and right, or right and left, once more we get back into the Tai Chi stance, once more we torque, run the energies parallel with our meridian points, our main points, okay? This time the hands go straight up. It is known as Twin Peaks, Twin Peaks snow-covered mountains. So it's known as Twin Peaks piercing Jade, notice how my arms go behind my back, and ideally they should touch, so from the reversal, huh? Twin Peaks piercing jade earrings. From the camera, we talked, okay? Twin Peaks piercing jade earrings. Drive all energy into your left foot, soar on your right, Take a step forward, keep your back left foot flat. From this position, you bring your arms out. And as they come across in front of you, turn them inward. If you're doing it properly, there should be some vibration almost. Okay? So you turn them in a twin peaks piercing jade earrings. Okay? Then the secret from this position is bring your hands back only when you've recovered your equilibrium then and then only, whip up your right, drop. So we had um, exploding monkey right, exploding monkey left, then we had twin peaks piercing jade earrings. Recovery, Tai Chi stance. Now we're gonna go into golden rooster and the snake, the tree, the snake. Tai Chi stance, torque. Embrace the universe. Sweep up the earth. The secret here is to turn your right foot just a little bit here to the northeast, remember northeast. And as you go up, hang out your right hand. Left comes across. So this is very flamboyant. It is known as golden rooster. Okay? We do it again. So we just did the torque. We just did twin peaks piercing jade earrings. Now we torqued, embrace the universe, sweep up the earth, golden rooster, use this as your counterweight. Left knee is now over your right, R uh, left is under the right hand, so you're in this position. Notice again the protection. This is the Shaolin scoop, protection in the marble. Basically, if you notice, any one of these forms we're doing, if you accelerate it, is highly dangerous. For example, Twin Peaks piercing jade earrings. Uh, twin Peaks piercing jade earrings, okay? This in the martial form, if the opponent here, you could go, pow, boom. Uh, grabbing ears, very dangerous. Okay, so basically we had torque, embrace the universe, sweep up the earth, golden rooster, probably the most flamboyant of this whole form. Right hand shoots out, so it's gonna be right over left, Right hand over left, left knee over right knee. Okay? So we're into this position. Okay? That is known as Golden Rooster, strutting his stuff. From Golden Rooster, you drop your left foot, so you get yourself aligned here to the north, and you get your right kneecap over your right toe, so you get the slant. Okay? So from this to straddling, both toes are facing north. Put uh, your left, your right knee, your right kneecap over your right. Your left, your right hand comes over. Ideally, the 
Chinese who taught me this, Jia Fu Fu Feng, said that when you're like this, if you drop the plumb line, that plumb line should touch your left toe. So it's a beautiful circle. For the Chinese, this represents a windswept tree. Okay? So we were like this, we were like this, we went into this position, from this position we sagged on our right, our right hand became the tree, the left hand becomes the snake. So here comes the snake. The snake slithers down the tree, and as it's sliding down, you can make the flamboyant, beautiful gesture to the east. All the weight is in my, left, in my right foot. The secret is, as it comes across, when my left hand touches my right kneecap, that's the signal. As I'm shifting, it was 100%. Now it's 70, 30, 50. So it's like this. OK, left hand touches right kneecap. We shoot across. Notice as I'm shooting across now, the left foot is turning to the west, north, east, south, west. OK, so the snake slithers down. As we come up, we're going to do the reverse now. Left foot is facing west. As I come up now, notice I'm hanging out my left, and I'm coming up golden rooster. OK? Notice this was like this. Now we've just reversed it. So tree. Now we zoop up. Now the left is over the right, and the right kneecap is over the left. OK? Once more tree, and we sweep up, okay? Came up too fast. So for beginners, slow it down a bit, okay? So we're in this position. From this position now, we go into tree. So basically what we did to the north, we're now going to do to the west. So basically what we have is we came up into golden rooster here facing the west, left over right, right over left. Extension, same thing now. Notice my feet are parallel, facing west. I sag on my left kneecap, just the opposite of the right over here. Now my left hand becomes the tree. Remember, plumb line. My right hand is now the snake. So once more, the right hand, now the snake, slithers down the tree. Notice I'm making this beautiful aching circle to the south. As I move to the south, the right hand now touches the left kneecap. That's the signal. As the right hand touches the left kneecap, again, we're shifting weight 50-50. And my right foot now faces north. And now my left hand and my left thigh will come up and then be released. Yin yang. A few minutes over, we were over this. Chop the monkey, notice, <whistles> Chinese never forget. So we were in this, and it's as if we had too much yang over here, here comes the yin. Okay? So again, notice, it's as if you're here, your left hand is tied to your left thigh. So let's put it together in sequence. So we came up, golden rooster, Golden rooster, extension, tree. Notice how my left kneecap is over my left, the slant. So now the snake, as we come up, searching for the jade, the bottom of the sip. Now we'll uh, operate counterpunctal. Notice as my left hand comes up, it's crossed. The left hand raises. The right thigh, lower. Now the right will raise the left and lower. This is known as hunting for the jade at the bottom or in the Pacific. One of my Americans said this is freezing the ball in slow motion in basketball. OK? So notice it's using the opposite. Okay, now from this, 
which again you can do out in infinitum. You go hunting for the jade in the Pacific. Now we're going to move into blind man assuming the offensive. North, so here we turn northwest. This is, uh, excuse me, this is known as hunting for the needle in the haystack. So the hand goes up and you probe in the haystack. So let's put it together. Hunting for the jade at the bottom of the Pacific. Hunting for the needle in the haystack. Notice the feet are parallel, north, west, northwesterly. Hand comes over and you probe, hunting for the needle in the haystack. Once you've done that, okay, you come back, brief Tai Chi stance, and you turn now to the northeast. Notice in this position, left foot was behind, and I led with my right. You can just as well do this. All you gotta remember is whatever you do one way, do the opposite the other way. So we went like this, recovering, Tai Chi stance, now to the northeast. Right foot behind, left foot out, left hand up, right hand probes. So basically what we have is hunting for the needle in the haystack. Then we come to blind man assuming the offensive. The idea I guess in Chinese is this poor blind man, everybody's been throwing everything at him, taking a lot of garbage, he's had enough, he assumes the offensive. So we probe northwesterly, northeastly, needle in the haystack. Blind man is Tai Chi stance. Hands come over the eye. The blind man now takes one step to the northeast. The secret here is to turn that back right foot to the northeast. That's the secret. Turn it to the northeast so you're parallel. Once you're here, you drive all the energy through your right foot. Here we're facing northeast. We fly 180 degrees in the air and we'll land in southwest. So here it is. Blind man assuming, notice that back left foot, the offensive. Okay? Now notice, all through this form we've been doing ward off blow, chopping monkey. So after a while the monkey knows, oh God, here it comes, huh? This time we surprise the monkey. Instead of chopping with the right hand, we nail him with the left. So here we go again. Blind man, assuming, notice the back left foot turning, the offensive. Drive all the energy into your right foot, soar through the air. Notice now the right hand is being used as the water flow, and this hand shoots right through. In fact, in the other school, the Wu style, when they pull through is known as wiping off blood. So to put it together again, hunting for the needle in the haystack, hunting for the needle in the haystack, blind man assuming the offensive. Notice we were 180 degrees that way, northeast, southwest. We shoot through, and as we shoot through, then the back right leg comes up parallel, not in front, but parallel. Okay, so we were like this, come up like so, pivot here to the west, and in the last kata form. Once more, make sure you got a good Tai Chi stance, torque, embrace the universe, sweep up the earth, the energies of Mother Earth, Run the energy field parallel with your knees, your body. Open up your mouth. Drink of Mother Earth that we're nourished with. Mouth is open. Okay. So we drink in. We release. In the final form, the kata. Whatever hand you stick out, the other foot goes out. So if I'm on my right, I put my right, left foot in front, and my hand is out like so, okay? If I did reverse, it would be like this. Basically, this is known as temple post meditation. 
from the Sung Dynasty, 960 to about 1270 of our era, when monks in China and Japan, Vietnam, were getting sleepy, the Zen master, the Roshi, would make them stand up and hold on to a post, like in our churches, synagogues, holding the post and have to zazen meditate that way. So basically, um, blind man, um, blind man assuming the offensive, one last time, torque, embrace the universe, sweep up Mother Earth, run the energy fields parallel with your body, drink of Mother Earth, release energy, temple pose. This you hold on to about three, four, five minutes. Sometimes they used to make us do this for 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Bad. Okay. And that is the long, soft form.